to grasp fully what happens in today's Gospel, we need to ask ourselves first, what was the goal of Jesus coming to the world? What he wanted to achieve by our salvation? And the answer is first, he opened for us gates of heaven, so we may enter there again. And second, through his death and resurrection, he reconciled the human race with heavenly, with God the Father. He reconciled us, bring us back to being friends of God again. And what happens that he says to apostles today, receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. This is something as big as Jesus' resurrection, what heaven and earth haven't seen before the beginning of the world. First, God is risen. Second, through the merits of his resurrection, his passion, the work of redemption, he not only reconciled us with the Father, he offers continued reconciliation in lives of every one of us. Just need to go and ask for forgiveness, and his reconciliation is real. God brings us forgiveness through the sacrament of reconciliation. This is something big because it wasn't possible before Jesus' death and resurrection. And if we really would get how much we receive from God through the sacraments, we won't be complaining anymore that I need to go to the church, I need to go to confession at least once a year, and all this stuff. We'll be saying to everyone else and sharing you know, how beautiful confession is how much God gives me to reconciliation and how blessed I am that I can receive forgiveness any time I ask for it. And what else happens? Jesus breathed on them, on his apostles, the way he breathed on the first man, Adam, when he created him and Eve and began the human race. This is important because as Adam was able to walk with, uh, with God and talk to him and be so close with him, it was lost by his sin. And for many, many years, God was separate from people behind the veil, being only present and achieved available for people in the highest sanctuary, with only highest priests who go once a year. And what happens now is that we, as a people redeemed by Christ, as a new race, like Adam in Garden of Paradise, we can also walk with God and talk to Him face by face anytime we want. This is something big. This is new life in Christ. This is the reason to be thankful and to cry with joy that God give me so much. I would like to read for you words of Jesus which he spoke to Saint Faustina, the Polish nun, as he also gave her command to spread the devotion to his mercy and teach other the divine mercy chaplet. Because what he says to her in those words is restoration to what we belong, what was possible to Adam, that what is possible to us in relation with him to be so close to God. So these are the words of Jesus. It is not necessary, my child, to know much in order to please me much. It is enough that you love me fervently. Speak here to me then, as you would speak to your most intimate friend, to your mother, to your brother. So you want to ask me to do something for someone? Tell me his name. It is your parents, your brothers, your friends. 
Tell me what you want to do for them now. Ask much, very much. Do not hesitate to ask. I love generous hearts who somehow can come to forget themselves to look after the needs of others. Speak sincerely to me then of the poor you would console, of the sick you see suffering, of the straight you yearn to see return to the right path, of those absent friends you want at your side again. Say at least one word for each, the ardent word of a friend. Remind me that I have promised to listen to every petition that rises from the heart. And it's not a prayer for those whom, you, from, for those whom your heart especially loves such a prey? And for you, do you need a particular favor? Make a list, as it were, of your needs and come and read it in my presence. Tell me frankly that you are prone to anger, that you love sensuality and pleasure, that you are perhaps proud, variable, negligent. Ask me to, hum, to help of those efforts, many or few, which you undertake to free yourself from these faults. Do not be ashamed, poor soul. There are in heaven so many saints who had these same defects, but they prayed humbly, and little by little they saw themselves freed from them. Do not hesitate to ask me for spiritual and material goods, for health, memory, success in your work, enterprises and studies. All this I can give and I do give, as long as they do not hinder, but rather assist your sanctification. And about Divine Mercy Chaplet, Jesus says, Unceasingly recite, recite this chaplet that I have taught you. Whoever will recite it will receive great mercy at the hour of death. Priests will recommend it to sinners as their last hope of salvation. Even the most hardened sinner, if he receives this chaplet even once, will receive grace from my infinite mercy. I want to give unimaginable graces to those who trust in, your, in my mercy.